<laughs> when you're really not ready and you just press the button. So I know I was going to start this like a couple hours ago. Um, but, you know, life happens. And, um, yeah, since nobody's on yet, I'll just ramble about what took me so long. <clears throat> so my daughter has a Lego uh, thing. And she wanted me to help her. So, um, you know, I can't say no to her. I tried. I was like, okay, I'll help you with a little bit of the Lego set. And then I got to do this because I was going to do it like a couple hours ago. And, um, yeah, she kept sucking me back in. <laughs> so I'm just letting people join. Hi. How are you? Um, this will be, I think, my fifth live video. Um, oh, I didn't see if I could put a title on it. I meant to put a title on it. It's, can I put, yes, description. Okay. It, it's about the, uh, judgment versus discernment. <clears throat> um, cool. So yeah, I had mentioned that as a topic earlier because I was inspired by it. And I love the responses in the comments. I will definitely be sharing them because it was beautiful. Um, I want to just start off by saying first and foremost, um, these are things I, I wrote down when I was inspired by the topic. Um, words cannot fully describe the experience or feeling that we're having. Um, we can try, but a lot of times words come very short into actually allowing people to uh, fully understand what it is that you're experiencing. So that's number one. Um, these things are happening to us and our perspectives are just automatically there from our own experiences. Um, and so from there, anything that you perceive, um, it's all based upon the eye of the beholder, you. Whatever it is that you are choosing to uh, look at and focus upon. Which inevitably brings me to reflections. Which I think something was mentioned like that in the comments. Um, about everything that we are experiencing in life is simply a reflection of ourselves. That perspective that we hold is um, basically, you know projecting that uh, experience for us. So um, once you understand, too, uh, that simple fact, that concept of the fact that everything that you're experiencing is a reflection of yourself, and you start, you know, understanding that you can perceive yourself as one in the, the how we are all fully connected in all this grand scheme of things in the universe and whatnot, and, you know, by understanding that, we can better um, communicate with people without judgment, without having that negative connotation of, oh, this is right or this is wrong. My perspective is right. Yours is wrong. In essence, everybody's perspective is right to them. That's that's the whole point of having your own personal perspective. So, um, you know, once you grasp the fact that we're all connected, every single one of us are all together in one way, shape, or form, uh, you know, experiencing this life experience through the extension of God, so to speak, source energy, whatever it is that you call it. Um, but we are all, you know, extensions of that, and we are connected in that sense. That's why a lot of people say we are all God's children, etc. You know, we are all family, because we are. In essence, we are. The very core of our being is all the same. We are all connected to that same source. Um, just experiencing it and expressing it through this different vessel, this human body. So, um, you know, once you grasp that, I think, as a basis of what it is that you're, you know, doing in your, in your, in your life, um, then you can start understanding that judgment is so... <laughs> How do I say, like, you'll be able to understand, like, okay, nothing is wrong. That's another thing I put. So nothing is wrong. Just because someone else has a different opinion doesn't mean that it's wrong. You can perceive it that way, 
or you can perceive it another way. Again, truly in the eye of the beholder. So, um, that's basically what I wanted to point out as a basis for the difference between judgment and discerning. So, the reason why I wanted to talk about this topic is because there is a big difference. And um, most of us are judging kind of subcon like unconsciously. It's just automatic. And there's nothing wrong with that. Again, <laughs> there's nothing wrong. Um, but understanding the fact that discernment is more of being aware of those differences and not having such a solid uh, negative opinion about it being different. You know, just accepting it as it is. Like, it is what it is. It's different than what I perceive or agree with. But that's that's all. I don't have to keep focusing on it. If I differ from it, why would I keep focusing on something I don't like? You know, a lot of people will sit here and bash something um, that has nothing to do with their lives. <laughs> and this judgment is, you know, continuously passed on for no good reason. You know, it's just focus on something that you do agree with or that you do like or that you do enjoy. Let people live their own lives, you know, and just be free, <laughs> whoever they want to be. Um, so I've just been rambling. Uh, I have not been checking who's on here or nothing. So, um, anyways, hi, Crystal. I am going to call you. I was going to call you before I did this live, but I was basically supposed to do this live, like, a few hours ago. So, um... I just wanted to touch on the topic because a lot of people, and I'm going to read the comments because this one in particular had such a beautiful description to exactly what this whole thing is about. Um, so, hi guys. Thank you for joining, Melania. Um, Robert, I do not agree with the projection argument. It is very solipsistic. So, I'm sorry, I can't even pronounce that word. <laughs> Um, preach on. I see what you're getting to, but the projection argument is a way to dismiss the behaviors of others and wrongs people do sometimes. So if someone kills someone that is not wrong or slanders, I'm not saying that it is not wrong or like I would perceive that. Yeah, of course, some things could be definitely unjust and I'm not saying that it's right. What I'm saying is that, um, okay, if it's in your experience and you're you're aware of it, you have the ability to either discern and say like, okay, well, this is for me or not for me. You, you have to feel it within whether or not it is for you to focus upon and, and do something about if it's in your experience. Um, you know, I'm not saying that those things are not wrong. All I'm saying is that we all have different uh, perspectives for sure. Obviously, the person who is doing it probably doesn't think that they were wrong which is weird of course and I've, I've thought depth in depth about this as well on that topic in particular <clears throat> about people killing other people of course that sounds so wrong it seems so wrong but in their mind they were obviously in a whole different perspective they must have had uh, something in their you know mindset that was that was for them to do and I don't agree that that's natural for us. I think that a lot of things like that that happen, um, unfortunately, have been um, pressed upon us in, in subtle ways that many people are not aware of um, and brainwashed, unfortunately. This well transcends opinions and goes into human behaviors when we observe right and wrong. I'm really being honest. I appreciate your honesty. I love it. I, absolutely. And I, I always say, like, I don't oppose people arguing with me or debating and saying that I'm wrong or anything like that. I'm a very open-minded individual, so I accept everyone's, you know, opinions at, like, on anything. At the end of the day, um, I'm here to learn. So I'm pretty sure that your differing opinion can, can teach me something. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm not trying to tell him I'm observing. No hate intended. I don't take it that way at all. <laughs> so, thank you. The ability to control. Yes, Crystal, I'm going to call you. <laughs> the ability to control. Yes. 
control. So like maybe your emotions, yeah, your responses, responses to um, situations that you're experiencing. Um, so let me read these comments that I that I had earlier because it was really interesting what was brought up. The first one um, that I liked was the uh, by Stephanie. I don't know if you're watching. Um, judgment is uh, judgment to me is placing blame uh, or fault on something, while discernment is simply acknowledgement without placing blame or thinking if it's right or wrong. This, uh, think of it like this. If I pass judgment, I may see someone acting in a rude way and think it's right or wrong, while discernment is just noticing the same actions without thoughts of them being right or wrong. Which I personally, I agree. I think it's, that's quite simply the difference between the two. Um, I study classical philosophy, so I ask a lot of questions and try to bring ideas to the table. I love it. I ask questions all day in my head. So that's that's another reason why I, I like to bring these topics to um, my life feed. Now I, I've gone over the whole nervous anxiety thing, kind of. Um, so because then I can have discussions like this with people on a broad sense, because of course I have friends to talk about it with. But I mean, to have like an open discussion with people and hearing the different opinions and actually getting, you know, my expression out about it because I write a lot. I think a lot. I definitely think in depth and question my <laughs> my own philosophies all day. So why does it keep, I think this laptop is moving. Sorry. What about judgment observing the situation such as my judgment says the situation is beneficial or it could pose a threat or judgment is passing a verdict. Um, well, that's another thing. Um, I think I heard, I don't remember where I was listening to something, um, about how that you need those instincts. Those are kind of like instincts, just like, actually, you know what? Yes, it's in this comment. That's where I heard it. <laughs> Better. Let me just read this comment here. And I think it will really like tie everything together. It's, it's beautiful the way it was expressed. So <clears throat> by Jamie Ann. I don't know if you're watching as well. Um, but she wrote, um, I wrote something about this the other day, finding words hard to find to explain th that we are always judging. It's what we use um, is for the most part a very powerful thing. Um, I am using it in a way to reflect what I do not want to repeat or am I using it to deflect my own shortcomings? in the, I think, the long run. Um, this was a response from a friend, and it was most beautifully explained in exactly how I feel about it without finding the words. So this is quoted by her friend, and I, I love this. What others think of you is none of your business. When you find fault in others, it's only because you find that same fault in your own character. Judgments are, however, human. When we remove our ego from the situation and make judgments simply for our own survival, like a gazelle determining if it's a lion off in the distance or it is an antelope, and we use our judgments simply as factual tools and we do not fault the lion for being what it is, then we are using the only healthy form of judgment. For it is okay to be a judge, but it is not okay to be a jury or worse, an executioner. It is when we ourselves are doing this form of unhealthy judgment, we must be able to quickly identify it so we can immediately turn it around on ourselves so we can learn to be our own jury and execute our own ego instead of assassinating the character of others. Now, to please tell me that was not beautifully stated. Like, I'm almost in tears now. <laughs> Seriously. I think like how that was worded completely ties in everything that I would love to say. <laughs> like, um, and thank you guys for joining. I see a whole bunch of people joined while I was reading that. Beautiful. Um, so yeah, judgment is not a bad thing. Exactly. Much like the misuse of the word karma only being used as an assassin. Exactly. And if, I don't know, Robert, if you were on when I first started, my first point that I made when I wrote down this whole thing was that words invariably cannot fully describe an experience or feeling. These things are happening from perspectives and the accuracy of anything is based upon the eye of the beholder. It depends upon you. 
Um, so that's pretty much what I was saying. But that explanation, um, when she wrote that, I was like, oh my goodness, I love it. <laughs> like, I just, I, I couldn't believe how it was expressed so perfectly in, in the analogy. Like, you don't blame the lion for being a lion, even though it may want to eat you. You just acknowledge the fact that it's a possibility that it's, you know, hungry and you may be food today. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty much all I was trying to say. And the words are very much, um, unfortunately, misconstrued these days and used um, and abused and, and misunderstood, as we all may know. Let me read some of these comments. So how are you guys doing tonight? I hope all is well. At what point does perception merely become solipsistic in spirituality with these words? Okay, I don't know what that word means or how to pronounce it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to look it up because that's what I do when I don't know a word. We have this wonderful thing called the internet right at our fingertips. Philosophical idea that one's only mind is sure as it is. Position of knowledge. No, I believe that there's a collective consciousness as well, which is kind of the point of reason why I feel that that's kind of what I was touching on with the whole that we are connected. We are all experiencing this and expressing this from the same source of, of energy. Um, fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. Obviously, I don't. Can I see how much how? I think uh, last time I could see it how long I was on here and I don't remember <laughs> um because I do have I do have to go not too long um but I feel that we have a, co a collective conscious as well which is why um a lot of experiences that we have are simultaneous with others you know we share experiences of course but uh, that's why I don't know if you've ever heard of the um, I forgot what his name is. Um, I was watching YouTube, some YouTube video, and this guy was explaining the fact that we have, you know, this perspective of the outer world, which is what we're experiencing. For instance, I'm in front of you on a live feed thing video, um, on the device, and we are having a, an open discussion about something. And so we are experiencing that together. That's in your outer world. If you're here with me, it, Acknowledging me, responding to me, um, communicating with me, etc. In your inner world, you have your own thoughts and things that are going on. You may start thinking about dinner. Um, you may start thinking while you're, you know, listening to me or talking to me or engaging with me. Um, you may think about what you're doing tomorrow or your vacation coming up next week. So that's your inner world. And so I feel like we shift between these uh, perspectives, um, in our experience on a daily consistent basis. Um, I don't understand, cause I don't understand what that means. Okay. It's saying that means to like, it's a, an idea that only one's own mind is sure to exist. Holding any the knowledge of anything outside one's own mind is unsure. I mean, I don't understand what that, um, like, the projection argument. I'm not sure what what you mean by that. Wanting to understand is difference between using discernment and judgment to me, although they are very similar. Your inner voice. They are very similar. That's why judgment gets a bad rep like it's just something negative um and in essence if we use it in the terms of discernment then you're more so um in a perspective of open-mindedness to okay things are just what they are and I can just choose what I want to um I'm gonna stop this video and I might come back on because my daughter needs me but um thank you guys for watching I will definitely touch up more on this topic in a little bit so